Okay, let me introduce to you Brock the Pierce. But certainly it's uh, no need to introduce this very famous uh, actor, the candidate, the presidential candidate uh, last year. And uh, we met him on the stage of AIBC Summit uh, today. He made a very interesting uh, speech uh, to part in a very interesting discussion about decentralization of blockchain and democratization of the world with the help of blockchain. So, uh, could you please tell just a few words? Why do you think it can uh, help to democratize? And how is it possible why uh, the world, uh, the legislation isn't uh, dem uh, democra um, democratic uh, in many countries? And blockchain is about de decentralization and many countries about centralization. The government is about centralization. So how is it possible to combine these two things that are very difficult to, to combine? Well, the future is going to happen, whether we like it or not. Change is a constant in the universe. We are living in an ever-changing world. So we can't stop change. The question is how do we adapt to it? And do we successfully ride that wave in a way where our nation, our people benefit from it? Mm -hmm. Or do we miss the wave mm -hmm. and find ourselves, you know, getting pummeled by the wave, you know, into the coral? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we're living through the fourth industrial revolution mm -hmm. and the world is changing. Technology is changing the world, all of our lives, all of our institutions and businesses. Mm -hmm. And um, how do we navigate this fourth industrial revolution? And that is the question we all have to ask ourselves individually as businesses, as governments. Mm -hmm. And um, what is a blockchain? A blockchain is a slow, dumb, expensive database. <laughs> Why would we want something like that? Well, it has some really interesting attributes, functions. Mm -hmm. For one, it's incredibly resilient mm -hmm. and censorship resistant mm -hmm. because of its distributed and decentralized architecture. Mm -hmm. It's also very interesting how it becomes a single source of truth. Mm -hmm. It's a database where no one can edit. It doesn't have the read-write edit functions. Mm -hmm. Data just gets written into it. Mm -hmm. So history or his story is no longer written by the victors. <laughs> it becomes a single source of truth. Mm -hmm. And our actions, our integrity, is going to be out there in a way where all can see. Mm -hmm. And so, as you start thinking about a database that can't be modified or edited, we need to be really mindful of our actions. Mm -hmm. Cameras on. <laughs> um, gotta let there be light. And uh, it drives transparency, efficiency, and security. And so mm -hmm. a distributed, decentralized, resilient database that's incredibly secure is why we would use a database like that. And as you start to ascend up the rabbit hole, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you'll start to understand the significant implications of this. Mm -hmm. You know, most people first learn about this and explore and engage you know, normally because they see it as an opportunity to make money. Mm -hmm. yeah. They heard about money being made. Mm -hmm. and that's why people get started. And eventually you start to learn about the, the really deep philosophical sort of side of this. Mm -hmm. The moral sort of questions. Mm -hmm. You know, you're forced to ask yourself and 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 it, and you really start to reevaluate your life and start to ask yourself, what is my purpose? Why am I here? Mm -hmm. What am I here to do? How am I going to show up mm -hmm. in the future? Mm -hmm. And we're going to need some training. Mm -hmm. So keep in, asking the questions. In the year 
2020, you were the presidential candidate. And at that time, you have to become the president. Maybe in four years it happens. And what would you change in terms of blockchain, in legislation? Uh, maybe something else, but at least what would you change first if you're a president of the, of the United States? Well, I guess in the, in the context of blockchain and cryptocurrency, and I mean, it, it's, it's kind of hard to regulate mm -hmm. database technology. Mm -hmm. If you understand how simple this stuff is, it <laughs> makes it a little complicated. Um, but I spend a lot of time trying to build bridges mm -hmm. between institutions and the establishment and the incumbents. Mm -hmm. Because it's human nature to fear that which we don't understand. Mm -hmm. And we conquer fear with knowledge. And so I spend a lot of my time providing knowledge to people in positions of authority so that they can make good decisions mm -hmm. on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Because they're in a position where the decisions they make can have a profound impact mm -hmm. on the future of our, our nations, mm -hmm. our institutions, our businesses, and our lives. But we live in a world where mm -hmm. there's many governments and regulators. In this instance, I'll just focus on the US. I encourage less regulatory action mm -hmm. by, call it the federal or national mm -hmm. agencies and legislators and mm -hmm. such, because this one's for all the marbles. Mm -hmm. If you make a mistake and regulate in a way that is nonsensical or sensible, mm -hmm. it could have a catastroph catastrophic mm -hmm. impact on a nation, mm -hmm. which is why it's so important those people in positions of power understand what's happening so that they can make good decisions on our collective behalf. And so what I'm encouraging in the U.S. is that the states Mm -hmm. are the ones that attempt to regulate. Mm -hmm. We have 50 states and territories. Let them experiment mm -hmm. with regulatory frameworks. Mm -hmm. Because if one of the states makes a mistake, mm -hmm. as a nation, we can afford mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. That state will lose people and business and revenue and all sorts of things as a result of that. But as a nation, we can recover. Mm -hmm. If the federal government makes a mistake, mm -hmm. it could end the U.S. dollar's reserve status in the world. Mm -hmm. It could prevent the U.S. from being the capital of innovation in the world. Mm -hmm. It could move the financial market quickly out of our country. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, there's, this is very, very serious stuff. Mm -hmm. We're talking about the fourth industrial revolution, and it's important that our elected officials, our, our governments, our rulers, mm -hmm. our civil servants, our stewards, custodians, etc., mm -hmm. make good decisions. Our future depends on it and the fate of our respective countries. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. In the year 2012, you established a Blockchain Foundation. And the main idea, or the main mission of this organization was to promote Bitcoin, to protect it, and make it more popular. Now we live in 2021. That time, Bitcoin cost less than 100 bucks. Now it's more than 40,000, even 60,000 dollars. So there's no need to make it popular anymore. It's as popular as it's possible to be. But what is the mission of this foundation right now? What is your current job? What is your mission in terms of blockchain? I have about 200 um, jobs uh, in this space. And so the Bitcoin Foundation was not established by me, but it was the initial organization 
that took on the responsibility of the core development, the code base of Bitcoin. Gavin Andreessen received was the successor to Satoshi and handled the keys. It was the organization responsible for advocacy, education, evangelism, lobbying. It was only this was the original entity that you, supported you were the director of that. I was elected because this was an elected board. I was elected yes. to the board and then made chairman by the by the board and in the beginning, there was only one organization. Mm -hmm. In the spirit of decentralization, mm -hmm. we took Patrick uh, Merck, who became uh, executive director. Uh, we worked with MIT's Media Lab mm -hmm. to distribute the keys of the core development to MIT. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, we worked with other organizations like the Digital Chamber of Commerce mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to step in and uh, facilitate educating mm -hmm. our elected officials in the capital. Mm -hmm. uh, in terms of all the, origi the original conferences mm -hmm. in the industry were, were run by, by this foundation and now there are many other organizations. So as I like to say, I only do the jobs that no one else will mm -hmm. or can. Mm -hmm. If others are doing it well, I'm happy to sit back and you know, cheer you on and say good luck mm -hmm. with that. Um, I, I, I'm not looking for more jobs, but uh, uh, I, I think getting through all the things I do would be a pretty, um, uh, it would take up more time than, than, than we're going to have. <laughs> okay. Thank you for your job and thank you for uh, making an interview. So stay in touch. All Thanks right, a thank lot. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.